A new season, a new era. Manager Lee Clark had brought in new faces. Amongst the fans and the squad, there was renewed hope. As a team, I think we said at the start of the season that we'll, we'll aim was to get promoted in minimum to reach the playoffs. Well, obviously, one of the targets um, at the start of the season was first of all to make the at least the playoffs. You know, you try and um, aim for the top two if you can and get up more than Manly. But good out to the lads here. Obviously, I'm new. It took me a matter of weeks to, to fit in with the lads. They all made me feel welcome. But just in general, with the coaching staff, the, the players, the, there's all good, there's good banter between us. Everyone's got good relationships. I had a lot of help from all the lads, experienced lads, the coach and staff helped us settle in. It's been a massive learning curve for me. I came in, I was only expecting to make up the numbers. I think if I'd asked everyone, I would have been here at the fourth choice striker. And I didn't want to come in, do that. I would have been, maybe if someone asked us before I came in, I would have been happy with maybe 10, 15 games at the most. The first game of the season was at South End, but while the squad arrived as usual in style, others, including chairman Dean Hoyle and several backroom staff, had a rather more arduous journey. The trip to South End was a very special occasion for the football club. Everything from it being the first game, if you like, first league game of the new era. So, uh, so there was a lot riding on it, but also, of course, the uh, the cycle ride. Uh, from Huddersfield to, to South End that took three and a half days to actually get there. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic event. Yeah, I'd heard about it. Obviously, I've well, been told about them biking down from this ground down to South End, which I wouldn't have liked to have done myself. But uh, Boothie had reminded me a few times about it, so yeah, we were all aware about it. Arriving in South End on that Saturday morning was brilliant as well. There were something like 200, 300 fans sort of waiting outside the stadium and cheering us on. So that, for us, was a very special occasion. Don't fall off again, you. To raise £120,000 for the uh, Yorkshire Air Ambulance. And, of course, our academy, split between the two, is, is a phenomenal uh, achievement. Also an achievement, after conceding a two-goal lead, was returning from Southend with a point. Town were one down as early as the 13th minute. Robbie Williams judged to have tripped Frank Musa on the edge of the box. Lee Barnard converted the penalty. Eleven minutes after the interval, Southend doubled their lead. Alan McCormack made inroads into the town half to set up Musa, whose angled shot beat Alex Smithies. Well, basically, you know, started the game quite well and looked to be in control and gave away a couple of poor goals. And when you're two 0 down away from home, you know you're really up against it. After an hour, being two 0 down was pretty, um, pretty disappointing to say the least. It wasn't until 71 minutes that town halved the deficit. Anthony Pilkington connecting with Gary Roberts' cross. By now, the manager had changed his strike force. Jordan Rhodes and Lee Novak replacing Robbie Simpson and Theo Robinson. And in the 79th minute, it paid dividends when Novak headed a cross goal and Rhodes dived in to grab a point. His first goal for the club on his debut sparked gleeful celebrations on and off the pitch. It wasn't the end of the drama. Seven minutes from time, Michael Collins received the first red card of his career after an off-the-ball altercation. But it didn't detract from what was an encouraging start. The lads showed great character like they did throughout the season and um, snatched, the, snatched the points, so set, it, set us up quite well, really. The first home game of the season brought Stockport County to the Galfarm Stadium in the first round of the Carlin Cup. 
The crowd of a little over 5,000 saw Town take the lead late in the first half. Gary Roberts and Lee Novak were both involved in the build-up, but it was Jordan Rhodes again on target. Just two minutes after the interval, the lead was doubled. Novak again played his part, laying the ball off to Rhodes, who came up with a memorable finish. Anthony Pilkington was the architect of Town's third, with a splendid reverse pass over the top to substitute Theo Robinson, who supplied a cool finish. Two minutes from time, Stockport grabbed a consolation. Anthony Pilkington's brother Danny crossed to the far post where Adam Griffin made time for himself to drive the ball home. But it finished 3 1, town through to the second round. The Southampton were expected to provide a sterner test at the Gal Farm the following Saturday. The Saints were still amongst the favourites to make the playoffs despite starting the season with a 10 point deduction after going into administration. But they were blown away by the Terriers' second half performance. Kick started when Lee Novak was clumsily brought down in the box by veteran Chris Perry. Jordan Rhodes saw his penalty initially saved by Calvin Davis, but found the net with the follow-up. Southampton drew level almost immediately with new signing Ricky Lambert powering an unstoppable header pass on at Smithies. The town weren't to be denied. Ten minutes later, they regained the lead. Anthony Pilkington's corner was cleared, but second time round, he provided a fine cross to which Rhodes applied the merest touch, sending the ball past the helpless Davis. Pilkington also had a hand in town's third. His 82nd minute free kick was headed on to the post by Andy Butler, but Anthony Kane nodded home the rebound to clinch a first league win of the season in front of just under 12,500 at the Galfon. Four days later, Brighton made the long trip up from the south coast, and for the first 20 minutes it looked as though their tactic of spreading five men across midfield might keep town at bay. That was until the two Antonys took a hand, Pilkington crossing for Kay to break the deadlock. Even then, there was little sign of what was to come, as Brighton equalised on 34 minutes. Former town lowly Liam Dickinson, lashing an unstoppable shot on the angle past Alex Smithers. But two minutes later, town were back in front. Gary Roberts' free kick caused panic in the visitors' box, and skipper Peter Clark reacted quickest to steer the ball past Michel Kuypers. Smithy's quick distribution, plus a dreadful mistake by Brighton defender El Abt, led to the Terriers' third. Lee Nova picked up the misplaced back pass, sidestepped his way around Kuypers, only for the keeper to bring him down. The furious Kuypers maintained his innocence, but a red card was the inevitable result. Substitute keeper Graham Smith's first task was to pick the ball out of the net after Novak's well-taken penalty. Thereafter, town dominated, and 20 minutes after the break, the floodgates opened. Substitute Theo Robinson unselfishly set Roberts free, and the previous season's top scorer did the rest. Five minutes later, Lee Clark's second sub, Danny Drinkwater, made it five. The midfielder, on loan from Manchester United, saw his first effort blocked, but drilled home the rebound for his first goal for the club. By now, Brighton were thoroughly demoralised and Robertson capitalised with a fine solo effort, keeping his composure and waiting for the keeper to commit himself before coolly finding the net. And town still weren't finished. In added time, a fine passing movement 
headed with the ball at Robinson's feet again. Although his first effort was blocked, he regained possession and curled the ball past Smith. A resounding win, and the first time Town had scored seven since the visit of Crystal Palace in 1999. It was a case of after the Lord Mayor's show at the memorial ground as Town suffered their first defeat of the season. There was hardly a shot on either goal in the first half, and although Town in their red away strip had plenty of possession, they were unable to fashion a worthwhile chance. The only goal of the game came from the penalty spot eight minutes from time, with Andy Butler judged off handled while he was sprawled on the deck. Earlier in the afternoon, Alex Smithies had saved Daryl Duffy's spot kick. This time, Jeff Hughes took responsibility and sent the young keeper the wrong way. Rovers won, Town nil. Town had the opportunity to get that disappointment out of their system in the Carling Cup second round at Championship side Newcastle. A healthy travelling contingent followed Lee Clark back to where he started his career. It was a highlight, obviously, going back to one of my old clubs and a club very special to us so early in my managerial career. The trip to St James's Park at the early part of the season was uh, was was nothing short short of special. Yeah, it was obviously that who I wanted, the one team I wanted to play against, and knew that I, all my family and stuff being Newcastle fans and friends, I forgot the chance and knew it would be a great occasion. It didn't begin well. Just after the half hour, a poor pass from Anthony Pilkington gifted Newcastle the lead. Danny Guthrie took full advantage of a rare mistake. But within a minute, the Terriers were level. Peter Clark sent a long ball forward. Theo Robinson gambled on a flick on and nicked the ball past Newcastle's reserve keeper, Tim Krull. The two sides had met barely a month before in a pre-season friendly at the Gal Farm where despite losing 2-0, Town had acquitted themselves well. And they looked like turning the tables when, once again, six minutes before half-time, Robinson's pace caught the home defence flat-footed, only to be brought down by Krull. The keeper's reaction indicated he thought the Town striker had dived, but commendably Robinson kept his nerve to put Town 2-1 up at the break. Unbelievably, it was 3 1 a minute after the restart. Jordan Rhodes, sporting a bandage after a clash of heads just before half time, slotted home from an acute angle. But that was as good as it got. Within three minutes, Newcastle pulled the goal back. Slick passing opened up the Terriers' defence with Jeremy applying the finish. A head injury to Lee Peltier forced Town into a defensive reshuffle and the home side was quickly back on level terms thanks to a penalty of their own. Andy Butler judged to have clipped Shola Amiobi who got up to take retribution from the spot himself. At eight minutes from time, Newcastle scored the winner. Amiobi heading Guthrie's free kick across goal to give Kevin Nolan the simplest of tappings. You know, we uh, certainly put in a performance that we all could be proud of and I was proud to be the, the manager certainly on that evening because I thought they were outstanding against a team that ran away with the championship basically. So we've, uh, you know, we've done ourselves uh, no harm that evening whatsoever. Jordan Rhodes was still sporting his bandage for the visit of Yeovil, who had ex-town favourite Danny Schofield in their ranks. And it was Schofield who was the happier early on as the visitors took a six-minute lead with a stunning goal from Kieran Murta. But soon after the half-hour town were level, Anthony Pilkington sped clear down the left and the limping Theo Robinson, who'd been injured seconds earlier, slid in at the far post. It wasn't a great game or a great performance, but at least the Terriers took all three points when Lionel Ainsworth crossed and Michael Collins arrived late to plant a header into the corner. Town 2, level 1. So at the end of August, Town were fourth in the table behind Charlton and Leeds, who both boasted 100% records, and the MK Dons. Amongst those who hadn't made such an impressive start 
for highly fancied Norwich City and Southampton, who'd managed to erase only three of their ten-point deficit. Come on, the millet! First up in September, a first-round time, the Johnsons paint trophy in a trip to Rotherham United's Don Valley Stadium, where Peter Clark gave town the lead as early as the second minute. Five minutes later, it was 2-0. A quickly taken free kick released Anthony Pilkington, and his cross was well directed by Robbie Simpson, the ex-Coventry striker's first competitive goal for the club. That should have been that, but the League Two side hit back before half-time. Neat play down the left opened up the town defence and Adam Lafondre converted the cross from close range. The Terriers, though, hung on to set up a trip to Chesterfield in the second round. The following Saturday saw fourth-place town travel to third-place MK Dons. Much of the attention naturally on the Terriers' prolific strike force of Jordan Rhodes and Theo Robinson, who'd so far scored six goals apiece. Punch it. Johnson. Chance maybe to take Peltier on, which he does! Brilliant goal! Jamal Johnson, wonderful goal by Jamal Johnson, it's his first goal since January and it was well worth the wait. In by Scarts, on towards Rhodes, a bit of a calamitous mess in there and Rhodes has tucked it in and it's 1-1. Oh, what an awful error by MK Dons, they're not complaining, I'm sure he will be. He looks puzzled as to what was going on, and it's 1-1. What a mess this was. McCracken on the floor, Dumbe on the floor, Gary looking to claim, no one doing so, and Rhodes fired in the loose one. Shot by Punchin, Easter, 2-1! The goals are coming flooding in now. Oh, where did this game come from? They went in front, pulled back within moments, back in front, well, two minutes later. A sudden explosion of chances and goals after a fairly nondescript first half. Nice touch for Roberts coming on, and it's 2-2, Robinson! Well, it's going mad with goals now. Lee Clark celebrates his side behind for moments as they were after going 1-0 down. Roberts with his first telling touch, and Robinson tucking it in. forward now Rhodes top of the bar hands on heads all round but he's an instinctive finisher Jordan Rhodes he's already grabbed himself one goal and he came within a whisker of having another sat up for the little chip volley and Gere could do nothing but watch and the frame of his goal came to his aid Drink water to take it. And it's turned into the net by Kay. 3 2 Huddersfield. Kay timed his run, got there in front of Garay, and scores his third of the season. Driven in, cleared off the top of Butler's head. It's a little more decisive, here's Goburn. Deflection on the shot, off the top of the bar, and Easter couldn't hit it, and then it's just over the top and a corner. Goburn can't believe it, Dumbe can't believe it. It's still 3-2. And the 
they cannot believe what they've seen. One up, two one up. They will go away having witnessed their first home defeat of the season, their first league defeat of the season. Won by the visitors, courtesy of Anthony Kaye's bullet header from a corner. Not surprisingly, town fans arrived at the Gal Farm for the visit of Brentford in buoyant mood, but not for the first time the West Londoners proved something of a bogey team. They closed down relentlessly and held out for a goalless draw. The nearest the Terriers came to breaking the deadlock was when Lee Novak saw a late effort cleared off the line. The only consolation, town kept a clean sheet as well. If the Brentford game was a disappointment, the trip to Millwall that followed was a real wake-up call to Lee Clark and his squad. The new Den's never an easy place to get a result, but for most of the game, Town was simply outplayed. After a couple of early scares, they went behind in the 12th minute when they were caught on the break, and Chris Hackett drilled home a low shot from the edge of the box. Two minutes later, the Lions were two up when veteran striker Neil Harris got in front of Lee Peltier to head home David Martin's cross at the near post. Five minutes after half-time, it went from bad to worse with Steve Morrison, who, like Lee Novak, had been brought in from non-league football, rising to meet a corner. Town did at least manage to get on the score sheet, Five minutes from time, Jordan Rhodes fired home his eighth goal of the season, beating keeper David Ford from the edge of the box. But the 3-1 scoreline was a sign of things to come. There was more frustration the following weekend with a second successive goalless draw at the Gal Farm. Town had the lion's share of possession and chances, but the nearest they came was an Anthony K pile driver that cannoned to safety off the crossbar. Next up, a trip to Walsall, now managed by former town fullback Chris Hutchings. It looked as though the Terriers would get back to winning ways when soon after half time, Theo Robinson raced clear, shimmied past keeper Gil Martin, and planted the ball firmly into the back of the net. It was a controversial penalty that handled the saddle as a lifeline. Darren Byfield's deep cross was headed down straight at Joe Scars, but the referee deemed it deliberate handball, even though the town fullback was only a couple of feet away. Byfield's feint sent Alex Smithies the wrong way from the spot to level the scores. Walsall grabbed all three points just three minutes from the final whistle, and not for the first time. It was an ex town man who was responsible. Dwayne Mattis firing in past an unsighted Smithies from the edge of the box. It had been a desperately disappointing month with just one win and only five points taken from a possible 15. Even so, Town remained in the playoff spots in sixth place. Leeds and Charlton still led the way and behind them Norwich had begun to make an ominous move up the table. The defining moment of the trip to Colchester came 30 minutes from time when skipper Peter Clark was judged to have swung an elbow in trying to climb above John White. Clark had been booked a few minutes earlier. The referee had no hesitation in showing them a second yellow and the inevitable red. The only goal of the game came just three minutes later. Kevin Lisby got the better of Joe Scars and his cross provided Coyote Odijayi with a simple tap-in. It was Town's third consecutive defeat in their fifth game without a win. It goes without saying when you go run without winning. You've got to do, be, be doing something not right, and certainly in that period of time, five games without a win, um, we weren't defending well enough as a team. In that period, we could have done things better, and, but we knew we were working hard at it and just got ourselves in a little bit of a bad run. Town had a chance to forget about their poor form in the league with a short trip to Chesterfield in the second round of the Johnson's Paint Trophy. The Johnson Paints Trophy against Chesterfield was, was an interesting game where we were 3-1 down with about three minutes to go and that, that never-say-die spirit shone through again. 
It was Anthony Pilkington who threw town the lifeline with a free kick threaded through into the bottom corner, his second goal of the night. And it was Pilkington's corner that was dropped by Spyrite's keeper Tommy Lee that led to a goal scramble and a chance for Nathan Clark to bang in the equaliser. No extra time in the JPT, so it was straight to a penalty shootout. And that was where Town's interest in the competition ended. Pilkington had already missed his spot kick when Jim Goodwin saw his effort saved and Donald McDermott booked Chesterfield's passage into the next round. And of course, we were lost on penalties, which was, uh, which was unfortunate, but, uh, but again, demonstrated the spirit that was in the camp. That spirit was amply demonstrated the following weekend when the Terriers put their poor recent run behind them and in some style against newly promoted Exeter, who included former town striker Marcus Stewart in their ranks. Town took the lead on 17 minutes. Gary Roberts seized on a misplaced pass, sent the marauding Michael Collins clear, and he crossed for Lee Novak to score his first goal for the club in open play. And a minute before half-time, Anthony Pilkington's trickery earned him space to deliver a pinpoint cross for Jordan Rhodes. Rhodes nodded his second and Town's third soon after the interval. Again, Pilkington, the provider, with a whipped cross helped on by Novak. And in the 52nd minute, only nine minutes after he'd struck for the first time, Rhodes completed a rare headed hat trick from Gary Roberts' corner. 4 0 the final scoreline. Town back in business. A lively band added to the atmosphere at the Valley, where Town took on one of the division's form teams in their next match. The big question, could the Terriers rediscover their form on the road as well as at home? Well, not in terms of the result, but certainly was another improved performance. And after Sam Sodji had headed Charlton into an early lead, Town had much of the play. Michael Collins' curler just wide of the post, just one of many near misses. But they got their reward in the 39th minute, a well-struck free kick from Anthony Pilkington bringing the scores level. Much to the delight of almost 1,400 travelling fans. Again, though, Town were undone by a set piece. Sodji again involved, heading on for Isla McLeod to knock the home side ahead again. For the remainder of the game, Town pressed hard for a second equaliser. Peter Clark actually had the ball in the net, but his effort was ruled out, apparently for a push. And when Lee Peltier's powerful header released Gary Roberts, the winger broke with purpose. His intelligent ball found Jordan Rhodes, who was only denied by the keeper's legs. It was with some relief that Charlton manager Phil Parkinson celebrated his side's victory. Yeah, we dominated that game from start to finish. What a goal this loud for no one to this day still knows why. We had a worthy goal chalked out. I've since had a clarification from the assessor at that game. That goal should never have been chalked out by Peter Clark. It would give us at least a point which we deserved. Obviously, we played really well that game, but we would have rather played bad and come away with three points. I think there's a few games that you could have said that now. A crowd of nearly 13,500 turned up the following Saturday at the Gal Farm for the visit of Lake Norrient. Unusually, Town opted to play towards the fantastic family stand in the first half. Supporters there had the perfect view as Gary Roberts volleyed the opening goal in first half stoppage time. Thirteen minutes into the second half, 
Roberts turned provider. His well-directed corner connected perfectly with the head of Nathan Clark. The centre-half's second goal of the season. Roberts was at his very best and deservedly took the Man of the Match award, tormenting the O's defence at will. In the 74th minute, he earned yet another assist, crossing for Michael Collins to send a diving header past keeper Glenn Morris. And in the closing stages, more clever win play led to Town's fourth. This time it was substitute Lyon Rainsworth with the trickery, Jordan Rhodes with the close range finish. A second successive 4 0 victory at the Gal Farm, a highly satisfactory afternoon all round. Despite Town's improved form, they still took only six out of a possible 12 points in October, and that saw them drop out of the playoff places. In fact, as the month drew to a close, the Terriers were ninth, albeit only three points off sixth place. 4,000 fans accompanied Huddersfield on the short trip over the Pennines to Oldham. In fact, they accounted for just under half the 8,500 crowd at Boundary Park. Oldham was a game uh, we targeted because our waveform in terms of wins hadn't been that good up until then. We knew we had one win behind us at MK Dunn, so we knew it was going to be a tough match, a bit of a local derby. In the end, Town won it more convincingly than the 1-0 scoreline suggests. Jordan Rhodes was unlucky to see his first half header crash against the woodwork. It was no more than they deserved when on the hour mark, Robbie Williams curled a delicious free kick past keeper Dean Brill and ran the length of the pitch to celebrate with the travelling fans. You got the perfect away result, you win the game and you keep a clean sheet, so we're delighted with that. Fireworks signal the start of Town's FA Cup campaign and fireworks are what the crowd of just under 6,000 at the Gal Farm were treated to as League Two side Dagnum and Redbridge were put to the sword. Robbie Williams kicked it all off with another pinpoint free kick. That was in the ninth minute and in the 21st, Gary Roberts doubled the lead from Anthony Pilkington's accurate floating cross. A rare-headed goal for the previous season's leading marksman and celebrated in style. Pilkington set up number three as well. His shot was blocked, but Lee Novak just managed to adjust his feet to scramble home the rebound. And it was 4-0 before the break. Robert's clever ball found Michael Collins, who passed for Jordan Rhodes to score off the underside of the bar. Pilkington came up with a third assist ten minutes after half-time with a perfect cross for Novak to make it five. That was Novak's second of the game. And Roberts also claimed a brace as well, latching onto a loose ball in the box late on after more good work from Pilkington. It wasn't the end of the scoring though, 15 minutes from time, the Daggers, who despite their drubbing, never let their heads drop, grabbed a consolation goal from Paul Benson. We beat Dagenham in the cup, who we were flying in League Two at the time. We were scoring pretty freely and playing some fantastic football. And I think that, again, set the tone for what was going to come throughout the whole of the season. So 14 goals in the last three home games. Just the moment for the Sky Cameras to arrive at the Gal Farm for the visit of Wickham. It was our first televised game. And the gaffer mentioned it before the game to let people sit up and, and notice how good of a side we are. 
and I think because we've got a lot of young boys, it was it was a really exciting game to come into. The TV performance again was probably a highlight for a lot of our supporters, uh, and a lot of our supporters around the world who, who not always can get to watch uh, Huddersfield Town at the stadiums. Now, what a town being practicing on the training ground this week? Options for the left or the right footer. It's Gary Roberts to take it with the left foot. And Peter Clark is there. And it's 1 0 to Huddersfield Town. It's taken them just over 20 minutes to break the deadlock. But they're deservedly in front, straight from the training ground. Pinpoint precision cross in. Clark reacted best of all, straight over the head of the keeper. 1 0 to Huddersfield Town. Pilkington. Roberts is in the middle. Oh, it's a tap in. It's all too easy for Huddersfield Town. Two in six minutes. Huddersfield Town two. Wickham Wanderers nil. Not quite sure about the celebrations. It means something to them. The goal means an awful lot to everybody at the Gal Farm Stadium. He really couldn't miss from there. And that's his fifth goal of the season. Rhodes, it's looking promising, it's looking very promising, what a super finish, 3-0 to Huddersfield Town, we've only had four minutes of the second half and Anthony Pilkington with his fifth goal of the season makes it 3-0 to Huddersfield, well there was a lot of work to do there before it came through to him, but what a precision finish, look what it means to Lee Clark. Clark with the header off the line and in at the second time of asking. Well, he's got lucky there. Wickham will consider themselves a little bit unfortunate. The first effort was blocked, but Clark reacted quickest of all the players inside a crowded six-yard box. And it's actually gone in, I think, off the goalkeeper. And it's 4-0. Oh, oh. This is Roberts. Now Robinson is in the middle, can he pick him out? Oh, he didn't need to. Oh, as own goals go, Michael Dubry, that's right up there with them. Well, the former Leeds and Chelsea man makes it 5-0 to Huddersfield. The goalkeeper was stranded. And Huddersfield gets six for a second successive home game. They're going to get the opportunity too because they've got a penalty. Roberts has been brought down by Michael Dubry. He's had a shocking couple of minutes. First and own goal. Now he's conceded a penalty. Theo Robinson, cool as you like. Six of the best for Huddersfield Town. Huddersfield Town, six. Wickham Wanderers, nil. And that's 20 goals in their last four home games. A flawless performance by the goalie right the way through to to the strikers. I remember uh, watching the game afterwards and some of the uh, the, uh, the plaudits that were there were fantastic. They were saying Huddersfield Town is most definitely a team to watch, most definitely a team of, of, of footballing capability and uh, as they did on that occasion could actually rip a team apart if they wanted to. It was there for everyone to see how good and how free-flowing our attacking football was. So. It was up there with one of our better performances, yeah. We could have beat anyone on that day, the way we played teams in the league above, even premiership teams, the way we played. And there were still bits we could have improved on in that game, but the football we played was unbelievable and it's probably the best game football and one of the best games football wise that we've played in. If it would have went to 9 nil, 10 nil, I think no one would have blinked and no one would have said that's a bit unfair but the performance on the day was um, top notch. So 20 goals in four home games. We would surely have been asking too much for another goal fest when Hartlepool arrived at the Gal Farm the following weekend. Instead it was the visitors who took the lead. Centre back Gary Little rising high to head home at the far post. It wasn't until 10 minutes into the second half that Town levelled it up. Anthony Pilkington's fierce free kick struck the woodwork and rebounded over the line off defender Peter Hartley. 
If it was any consolation to Hartley, Pilkington's magnificent strike surely deserved the goal anyway. There was an even more memorable strike that guaranteed all three points. A sustained passing movement saw the ball arrive at the feet of Robbie Williams and the fullback somehow squirmed his way past four or five defenders before planting a right foot shot into the net. Town two, Hartlepool one. The weather had been pretty dreadful during the game at home against Hartlepool. It was even worse down at the county ground at Swindon four days later. The pitch itself was fantastic that night, but I'm not sure the ball was actually on the, the pitch that often. The magnificent pitch, which was blighted by horrendous winds. The town played with the wind behind them in the first half, and it was against the run of play when Swindon took a 24th minute lead. Former Bradford City striker Billy Painter on target. The town were back on terms almost immediately thanks to a stunning strike from Lee Novak, who showed his growing maturity by creating space on the edge of the box before curling in an exquisite shot past David Lucas. Despite having more possession though, the Terriers failed to add another. And it was the Robins, in the middle of an impressive unbeaten run themselves, who took the points midway through the second half with a strike from the impressive Charlie Austin. I don't think we deserved a win. I think a draw maybe was fair, but to go and lose that game after we got pegged them back straight away after they scored, so I can't see the goal that we did wasn't the best. Again, another disappointing evening because we didn't come away with anything from a game we felt we should have done. The next game saw a break from league duty as Town travelled to Port Vale in the second round of the FA Cup. More than 1,300 supporters travelled with them to Vale Park, where the Terriers were the beneficiaries of a dreadful early miss by former Barnsley striker Mark Richards. It was doubly important since a couple of minutes later, Town scored what proved to be the winner, an overhead kick from Nathan Clark. Less than 15 minutes were on the clock, but it was enough to set up a potentially lucrative third round tie early in the new year. Nine points out of a possible 12 in the league in November had seen Town climb back up to fifth and close the gap on the automatic promotion places still occupied by Charlton and Leeds. Down at the bottom, Southampton had raised their 10 point deficit. They were beginning to climb out of danger. Bottom club Tranmere were the next visitors to the Gal Farm for what proved to be an extremely frustrating evening as three times Town took the lead and each time Tranmere somehow pegged them back. It all looked so straightforward when Lee Novak brushed aside some weak defending to open the scoring after just six minutes. The fans no doubt expecting another rout against the division strugglers. But within two minutes Rovers were level. Alex Smithies did well to block the first shot, but Ian Thomas Moore was on hand to steer him the equaliser. Same story after the break. Lee Peltier made ground down the right, and when his cross was deflected, Michael Collins had time to pick his spot. Surely normal service had been resumed. Alas, no. Barely two minutes more had passed when Town failed to deal with a long punt downfield and Craig Curran raced clear to beat Smithies and leave the manager fuming on the touchline. The town was so much on top that a winner still seemed inevitable. And eight minutes from the end of normal time, it appeared to have arrived. Courtesy of slick passing and a neat finish from Anthony Kay, 
who earned the respect of fans of his former club with his understated celebration. That should have been that, but amazingly, within a minute, Tranmere had equalised again. A first touch for Michael Ricketts after he'd come in as a substitute following Town's third goal. So it finished three apiece, with Lee Clark apoplectic on the touchline. Next up, the one all Town fans have been waiting for. 36,723 were at Elland Road to see the first West Yorkshire derby of the season. It's one that the all fans are uh, desperate to win and uh, it's got a little bit more of an edge to it. But if you start preparing differently for certain games, then players realise and wonder why you're doing it and they think something's wrong. Something like 36,000, it's like a Premiership game. But for me, I enjoy them atmospheres, I enjoy them occasions. Every player should. What you have to do in derby matches is show desire and passion and commitment, but I expect that from every game from me players. Our fans were terrific, their fans were, were similar, they were good. Not as good as our fans, but they were good, they were, they, they were loud and he scored an early goal, which spared them on. Just like the previous season, Leeds drew first blood in their first attack in the second minute. A rare mistake from Alex Smithies gifted Robert Snodgrass the opening goal. Going 1-0 down in a, you know, a game like that, an atmosphere where the majority of the support's against you. Other teams could have folded, but we showed what we were about and got back into the game. The equaliser came three minutes after half-time. A well-worked corner gave Gary Roberts the space to cross. The ball only half cleared, and Nathan Clark returned it for Lee Novak to head home from close range. His seventh goal of the season. Another quick corner almost led to a second. But Anthony Kay's spectacular overhead kick was cruelly denied by the woodwork. To add insult to injury, Leeds keeper Kasper Ackergren hoofed a long punt downfield and Smithies, under pressure from Janine Beckford, could only punch the ball out to Max Gradle, who returned it with interest into the back of the town net. 2-1 to Leeds. It would have been rough justice had town lost, but again they bounced back. The patient build-up on the edge of the box rewarded when Robert's accurate cross was gleefully headed home by Jordan Rhodes. Again, we showed our worth and, and got a, an equaliser and ultimately a, a point. But having said that, we could have... Uh, Won it right at the end. Yes, there were just seconds left when Anthony Pilkington's pile driver almost broke the Leeds crossbar. The fortune their goalkeeper had where it bounced off his back and went out instead of back in the goal. I was really pleased with the performance. I thought the lads were magnificent. As you see, early setback could knock, uh, could knock the uh, wind out of our seals, but it didn't. Just shy of 14,000 were at the Gal Farm for the next home game against Gillingham. Again, Town went behind to an early goal. The game had hardly settled down when Simeon Jackson raced onto a ball over the top and beat Alex Smithies with a precision lob. But by half-time, Town were ahead, though they had to wait until five minutes before the interval for the equaliser. Lee Novak showed commendable strength to shrug a defender aside before finding the back of the net. Soon after, it was 2-1. Gary Roberts had seen a free kick well saved, but from his resulting corner, Jordan Rhodes rose high to head home his 15th goal of the season. And despite more chances for a dominant town after the break, that's the way it finished. Huddersfield 2, Gillingham 1.
There was snow on the ground outside Carrow Road the weekend before Christmas as town travelled to take on the division's latest in-form team, Norwich City. For Lee Clark, it was a return to the club that gave him his first coaching job. And for almost an hour, it looked as if it would be a happy return as town bossed proceedings. Jordan Rhodes' effort over the angle, one of several chances that went begging. But when Norwich finally got their act together, they showed why they'd lost just one of their previous 11 games. Goals from Wes Houlihan, Chris Martin and finally Gary Doherty condemned town to a 3-0 defeat. But it was a scoreline that was hardly representative of the game overall. With the Boxing Day game at Carlisle postponed because of snow in the northwest, Town's next game was another six-pointer against playoff rivals MK Dons. One goal enough to win it, and what a goal it was. A stunning long-range effort from Anthony Pilkington. Alex Smithers had already saved the penalty, but he had little to do in the second half as Town held on comfortably enough for the three points. Those three points saw them leapfrog above MK Dons into fifth in the table, where they'd started the month. So at the end of the year, Town was still well on course to achieve the first ambition at the start of the season, to make the playoffs. There was a great deal of anticipation ahead of the first game of 2010, which gave the Terriers the chance to pit their wits against top championship side West Brom in the third round of the FA Cup. We knew it was going to be a tough game, West Brom, I think they were top of the championship at the time and well known for playing football, but we were starting to get a reputation of playing football as well and we, we knew that if we wanted to, to go up, we would have to match teams like that. But it turned out to be something of an anti-climax. After a goalless and almost chanceless first half, Town twice went close through Anthony Kay and Michael Collins. But as they tried to get their attacking game in gear, twice they were caught on the break. The highly rated Graham Dorans raced clear in the 77th minute to put the baggies ahead. And five minutes later, a clever through ball from Northern Ireland international Chris Brunt sent striker Chris Wood away to wrap up a 2-0 win. Everyone was gutted after the game that we got beat because of the second half performance we put on. No one likes losing, but there was a, that kind of thing that let's go and concentrate on the league now and push everyone, every team's above her to try and get promotion. The cold snap put pay to the league game the following weekend away at Southampton. So the next match saw Town take on South End at home wearing a red and yellow kit as a special one-off to raise money for the Keep It Up campaign in aid of the Yorkshire Air Ambulance. It was a largely uneventful first half, but the Terriers did take the lead just before the interval. Lee Novak made the initial inroads down the right. His ball inside found Gary Roberts, who released Anthony Pilkington, and his cross was converted by Jordan Rhodes. The ball clearly over the line before keeper Steve Mildenhall pulled it back. Just after the hour, Pilkington and Rhodes combined again to double the lead, the striker heading home from a typically well-directed corner. Southend pulled a goal back in injury time, but it was Town who won the attack when the final whistle blew. Final score, Town 2. South End won. Twelve thousand were back at the Gal Farm the following Tuesday for the visit of Bristol Rovers, but they were to leave frustrated by the third goalless draw of the season. It wasn't for want of trying. 
Only a fine double save by Rovers' Danish keeper Mikael Andersen kept Danny Drinkwater and Jordan Rhodes at bay. And he was brought into action again, blocking Nathan Clark's shot with his legs. Anthony Kay drilled the follow-up wide. Gary Roberts was the next to try his luck with a long-range effort that had Anderson scrambling across his goal. It wasn't all one-way traffic. Mark Wright had the best chance of the half for Rovers, but Alex Smithers came up with a brilliant save and Kay was back to complete the clearance. The pattern continued after the break, with Town generally in charge, but unable to make the breakthrough. Peter Clark's volley went agonisingly close. While at the other end, Smithies came up with a smart save, pushing Chris Lyne's effort onto a post. It finished Town nil, Bristol Rovers nil. After a ten-day break, because they weren't involved in the FA Cup fourth round, Town and their faithful fans made the long trip to Yeovil and came back with all three points thanks to a debut goal from Liverpool loanee Nathan Eccleston. My new Town also had Dean Bowditch to thank as the Yeovil striker blazed the first half penalty way over the bar. Largely because of the weather, Town had played only three league games in January, winning two and drawing the other, but they still dropped out of the top six. Meanwhile, Norwich had taken over at the top from a lead side preoccupied with the FA Cup, with Charlton dropping to third. The new month started with more frustration at home. Town took the lead against Carlisle with a goal early in the second half from Anthony Pilkington. Gary Roberts was the provider. Pilks directing his cross past keeper Adam Collin. Town fielded all three of their recent loan signings, Neil Trotman, Nathan Eccleston and Dean Heffernan. But the second goal wouldn't come, and with time running out, the visitors grabbed an equaliser. Then Marshall's side foot finish, giving Alex Smithies no chance. Four days later, Town made the long trip to Brighton, but a well-earned point made the journey worthwhile. It finished goalless, but the Terriers, in their red and black away strip, went closest when Anthony Pilkington blasted a trademark free kick against the woodwork. Next up, the eagerly awaited visit of promotion rival Swindon. The Robins were on a roll, having lost only one of their previous nine games, and that was the Premier League Fulham in the FA Cup. But this was a game Town should have won. The Terriers had all the early pressure and took the lead through skipper Peter Clark. There seemed little danger when the big central defender picked up the ball after a corner had been cleared, but some audacious skill took him away from the defender and he maintains to this day that this was a shot, not a cross. Whatever, it was one of the magic moments of the season. But by half-time, Town were behind. Just a minute later, Danny Ward, on loan from Bolton, swung over a perfectly weighted cross, and Charlie Austin scored his second goal against the Terriers this season. And in the 28th minute, Ward put the visitors ahead, beating Alex Smithies with a low shot from the angle of the box. If Swindon had slightly the better of the first half, Town bossed the second. They were soon back on level terms with a close-range header from Anthony Kay. But with Michael Collins having a shot cleared off the line and Robins keeper David Lucas in top form, the Terriers were unable to force a winner. It finished on as even. The following Tuesday, Town made their way up the M6 to Carlisle for the game that had been postponed on Boxing Day because of snow. It was the start of a tough-looking run of three games away from home. I think we were seventh at the time, seven, four, eight in the, in the league, and we wasn't slipping away. We were still in such a distance, but these three games were massive, and we spoke about it. 
and he said, as I said, as I said earlier, but you won't play much football on these pitches. Carlisle's pitches, no disrespect to these clubs, but the pitch is not the greatest. We've got to stick our foot in and, and battle, and hopefully our quality will shine through. I think towards the last part of the season, there was an element of pressure mounting on the club. Can it actually make the playoffs? I think there were one or two uh, indifferent performances that, that didn't help the club in its cause. And I think uh, one or two supporters raised the questions, are, are we really capable of getting into the top six? Uh, and then the pressure was on. The town coped with it superbly. Lee Novak gave him the perfect start, netting after just six minutes. Ten minutes after half-time, Jordan Rhodes doubled the lead, connecting with Gary Roberts' corner for his 18th goal of the season. It wasn't until the third minute of added time that Joe Ansinia pulled one back for Carlisle. Too late to affect the result, Carlisle won. Town too. Yeah, we knew Carlisle had been doing very well and they were, their home form was good. So we knew it would be tough. I mean, you talk about putting your foot in. I think to win any football match, you have to do that. But certainly away from home, you know, you have to be prepared to compete for the whole duration. And I think that's what we've done. We went down there. We had a game plan. Uh, obviously, it worked. Um, we, sh we, shut the, we shut the shop down. They couldn't get anything from us. Obviously, they nicked the goal in, I think it was the last, last couple of minutes or so. But it was a really good away performance from the lads. More of the same was needed the following weekend when just under 1,000 town fans accompanied the team to Hartlepool, not always a happy hunting ground for the Terriers in the past. Down at Hartlepool, I think they had a game plan to, to the, thinking that we're sort of pretty boys, as you, you'd call it, and they tried to get into us, and, but we, we turned up, we showed that we were, we were men. Jordan Rhodes certainly showed plenty of desire as he bustled past a defender, only to be brought down by keeper Scott Flinders. No doubt about the penalty, and no doubt about Gary Roberts' finish from the spot. Roberts had a hand in the second as well, swinging in the sort of cross that defenders hate. Lee Novak, though, lapped it up. His flicked header perfectly placed to loop into the top corner. It was a goal that took the strikers' tally to ten in his first league campaign. We competed with them all the way through the game. We had that extra bit of quality which showed and we come away with, with three points. We got a win at Hartlepool, which was another terrific away performance. Tranmere's Brenton Park's another ground where in the past town have had their troubles. In fact, they haven't won there for ten years. But even a blizzard couldn't stop them this time. It was the inform Lee Novak that caught the eye again, with both goals in a 2-0 victory. Jordan Rhodes and Neil Trotman were both denied, but Novak was on hand to nod home, with the referee rightly ruling the ball had crossed the line. The goal that clinched it came three minutes into the second half when the ex-Gateshead man latched onto Peter Clark's ball over the top and showed pace and poise to find the back of the net. But we come out of that. I think um, Novak got us a goal and then we just went on from there. So, three away games on the trot and three wins. Tramia, who you know went on through the season to beat some good sides at home, so we've uh, you know we're delighted to take nine points from three away games. Those three performances away from home almost acted as a bit of a springboard for us to sort of even mount a challenge to try and get automatic, and, and the whole uh, emphasis sort of changed. Well, we're now in the playoffs to can we actually get automatic? So people started to, to believe a little bit on the back of those three, three uh, away victories. And belief would be strengthened still further if Town could overturn the old enemy Leeds United in the West Yorkshire Derby the following weekend. 21,764 were at the Gala Farm to watch it.
we approached the Leeds game full of confidence, and we, but we knew it was going to be tough. It was a weird game, if you remember. We, we took an early lead from a goal from, from Anthony Pilkington. It came in the 13th minute. Pilkington's shot took a deflection that gave Leeds keeper Casper Ankergren no chance. Not that the town fans were bothered. The Terriers dominated the first half and should have gone into the break at least two up. But they were made to pay when Leeds equalised on the hour. The visitors' skipper John Housen started and finished the move. Worse was to follow as Luciano Becchio got his head to a corner to divert the ball past Alex Smithies. Leeds were jubilant, but it wasn't the end of the scoring. I think Gary Roberts scored scored the, the goal to, to get a, a point out of the game. Is it Pilks, I think, who crossed the ball and has his head, the easy job to just put it away again. After that one, there wasn't much time to go on and get a winner, unfortunately. We would have been very disappointed if we didn't get anything out of that game, because all the lads done well, they all dug in and, and give everything they got. Another good performance against one of the, the teams higher in the league. Unfortunately, we, we didn't get the win that probably our performance deserved. But it had been a pretty successful month. Town were unbeaten in seven league games, three wins and four draws, and maintained their place in the playoffs. With the MK Dons falling away, seven clubs had broken clear. Town were one of them. How the Terriers must have wished the original fixture at Southampton St Mary's Stadium hadn't been postponed. Since then, the Saints had embarked on a seven-match unbeaten run. They'd also gained confidence for an FA Cup run that had seen them beat championship side Ipswich and from reaching the final of the Johnson's Paint Trophy. As far as town were concerned, the night was an unmitigated disaster from the moment that Ricky Lambert gave the home side a 16th minute lead. Eight minutes later, it was 2 0. Lee Barnard heading in off the underside of the bar to leave Lee Clark stony faced on the touchline. And before half-time, it was effectively game over. Jason Punchin with a cross shot past Alex Smithies. Town's performance might have improved after the break, but the scoreline went from bad to worse. Dean Hammond's glancing header from a corner made it four. Six minutes from time, Senegalese striker Papa Weiger and Diaye wrapped it up with a fine solo effort. Southampton 5, Town 0. In its own way, the defeat at Gillingham was just as disappointing. Alex Smithies had already made one great save by the time Canadian international Simeon Jackson who'd scored at the Gal Farm earlier in the season as well, put the Jills one up. Town's chances of getting anything out of the game took another knock on 26 minutes, when Loney Nathan Eccleston received a straight red for a two-footed challenge on fullback Stuart Lewis. And just 22 seconds into the second half, the home side strengthened their grip further. Jackson ran onto a long ball, outpaced the town defence, and confidently slotted the ball past Smithers to make it 2 0. Town did have a chance to reduce the deficit, but Lee Novak's effort was well blocked by Alan Julian. And the scoreline would have been even worse were it not for a brilliant double save from Smithies to deny substitute Dennis Olley. <laughs> to prove it really wasn't Town's day, late on Gary Roberts' shot clattered against the post. 
Gilliam had their revenge for defeat in West Yorkshire. The final score, Gilliam 2, Town 0. Two consecutive defeats was hardly the form to take into a clash the following Saturday with league leaders Norwich. But not for the first time, Town were out of the traps quickly and dominated the first half, going ahead in the third minute when Neil Trotman connected with Anthony Pilkington's corner. But not for the first time, the Terriers were left to rue not making their superiority count. Just as at Carrow Road, Norwich came out for the second half a more determined outfit and drew level in the 69th minute through their top scorer, Grant Holt. Almost immediately, Michael Collins nearly re-established the lead, but saw his shot slide just wide. And soon after, the leaders were ahead. Holt outmuscled Dean Heffernan, and his cross gave substitute Stephen Elliott a tap-in. And with Town committed to attack, Norwich added a third five minutes from time. Elliott again the man on target. Rough justice on the Town side, but deserved at least a point. In two games against Norwich, we lost. Both of them in for an hour in both games, we were the dominant side, but it showed you that when we couldn't get that second goal to give us a bit of a cushion in there, they went and uh, showed their ruthlessness. Three chances, three goals. I remember against Norwich, where for, for an hour, we, we outplayed the eventual champions. Sometimes we get too caught up in an attacking, attacking and sometimes leave ourselves exposed a little bit. Um, that could be down to experience or because there's a lot of young lads in the team. So after three successive defeats, two away from home, it was probably with some trepidation that Town embarked on another long trip down south to Lake Norrid. They needn't have worried. Jordan Rhodes put them ahead with a deft flick in the 26th minute as the O's struggle to cope with the Terriers' pace. Soon after the break, Theo Robinson almost doubled the lead, but his downward header bounced over the bar. But midway through the second half, Theo got the goal he deserved. A cracking finish it was too from Anthony Pilkington's cross. Almost 800 town fans had kept the faith to travel to Brisbane Road, where it finished 2-0. High-flying Charlton were the visitors on the last Saturday in March. The big question, could town get the better of one of the sides above them in the table for the first time in the season? When Jordan Rhodes glanced ahead header past Darren Randolph from the 53rd minute, the answer looked like yes. Only for Charlton to come up with an equaliser five minutes later when Kyle Reid beat Alex Smithies with an unstoppable volley into the corner of the net. After that, it was stalemate and it finished one apiece. We should have won it, but for their goal, there was nothing we could have done. It was a great goal from the lad. Sometimes you've just got to hold your hand up and say, yeah, there's nothing you can do, but we give everything that we had. It took something special to beat Alex Mizzies, and, and that's what the lad produced. Town's dip in form, just one win from five in April, saw them drop out of the top six. These were worrying times because Bristol Rovers, MK Dons and Dark Horses Southampton had begun to close the gap. But typically, Town responded in style with six wins from their next seven games. The first of those victories was at Wickham, who'd been put to the sword at the Gal Farm earlier in the season. There was plenty of scrappy play in the build-up to the opening goal, but the acrobatic finish from Jordan Rhodes was sheer class. Town came close to adding a second in the 36th minute. Neil Trotman powered a header against the woodwork and Rhodes' follow-up was deflected over the bar. 
But seven minutes after half-time, the lead was doubled thanks to a great solo effort from Theo Robinson, his 11th goal of the season. There was to be no repeat of the rout at the Gal Farm, though, and with 70 minutes left, Wickham pulled one back through Dean Keats. But Town held on comfortably enough to take the three points and jumped back into the top six. Not the best performance of the season, but Lee Clark's men did enough to win it at a relative canter thanks to two more from Theo Robinson. The first was a deft finish after a fortunate ricochet gifted him the chance. The second and 13th of the campaign didn't come until late on, but again Theo showed commendable poise to finish it off after Gary Roberts had put him through one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Final score, Town 2, Oldham nil. Town's next game at Brentford's Griffin Park seemed to be meandering towards a goalless draw when with 90 minutes left, Peter Clark was harshly judged to have handled in the box. Charlie McDonald stepped up to dispatch the spot kick past Alex Smithers. Eight minutes from time, Brentford doubled the lead. Lewis Graben outpaced the town defence and again gave Smithies no chance. And three minutes later, the scoreline was given an even more lopsided look when McDonald was given time to turn in the box. To prove it just wasn't the Terriers' day, they also missed an even later penalty. In added time, Gary Roberts was unceremoniously upended by bees keeper Wojciech Szczesny. Roberts got up to take the spot kick himself, but uncharacteristically blasted the ball away over the bar. The game the following Tuesday against Walsall was one that almost defied description. The Walsall game was uh, one of those matches that I almost describe it as a crossroads of our season. 20 minutes into the game, Jordan Rhodes was pulled down as he raced into the box by centre-half Mark Hughes. The referee pointed to the spot and then pulled out the red card for the Warsaw skipper. Theo Robinson put away the penalty in style. And in first half injury time, Rhodes latched on to Danny Trinkwater's defence-splitting pass and unerringly found the corner of the net. And that should have been that. In fact, the longer the game went on, the longer it became like a practice match with Walsall seemingly intent just on damage limitation. Until, that is, a slip from Peter Clark gifted Troy Deeney a 64th-minute goal.
And four minutes later, it was all square. More defensive uncertainty allowed Dini time to turn and fire the Midlanders level. But such had been Town's superiority that few could actually believe it when seven minutes from time, the ten men actually went ahead. Alex Nichols' swift turn and shot wrong footing Alex Smithies. Many of the 14,000 fans had already headed to the exits and were walking home when in added time there was another extraordinary twist. Anthony Kay heading the Terriers level from Anthony Pilkington's corner. And still the drama wasn't over. In the third extra minute, substitute Lee Novak, back in the lineup after injury, volleyed the winner. An incredible end to an incredible game. Those left in the stadium celebrated in style. Lads once again showed unbelievable character. Novak uh, came on, really added something quite special to that game, uh, uh, and that spirit came through. That never say die. Everyone just couldn't believe what was what was going on, what we were watching, and then got the equaliser. Then I think in the fourth minute, I got the winning goal. So it was a great, great game. The, the players were. Obviously, we've had Jordan rightly so, but I, I had to obviously talk to them about what we'd done in terms of getting ourselves in a losing position, which was unacceptable, really. But they then dug themselves out of that position, so they deserve a huge amount of credit for that. The victory kept Town in sixth place on the table, three points clear of Colchester, who are now leading the chasing pack. What was needed now was a positive result in front of the Sky Cameras against third place Millwall. I think there's been a few highlights through the course of the season. Um, you know, certain games where collectively we've played really well. I thought it was a magnificent um, atmosphere, and that's why um, you know I think they drove the lads on that evening. It was a tough game. Theo Robinson has Roberts away to his right. Oh, Gary Roberts, fine cut back, Rhodes, oh, he's put it wide. It's a golden chance for Jordan Rhodes, he's not been in the game an awful lot, to be honest, but look at this piece of work by Gary Roberts, a drop of the shoulder, that's a brilliant pullback. Four coming along, way to try and get that. The goalkeeper misses it, but the Huddersfield captain does not. Peter Clark with a mighty blow for the Terriers. There's a fairly simple header in the end, but David Ford, the Millwall goalkeeper, will not be happy at all. He comes to this ball and gets absolutely nowhere near it at all. It's a great ball in to the far post, but the keeper doesn't get anywhere near it. Peter Clark does the right thing, heads it goal with the Millwall defenders, can't keep it out, but as a goalkeeper, Maybe it's a bit of a, a collision there, but he's nowhere near that at all. And it's a solid header from Clark and Huddersfield, who were playing well last few minutes. They've uh, certainly been in the ascendancy. They've taken the lead in a vital game. Again, no will come through Harris. Clever ball. Here's Smith into the box, lofted beautifully, crossbar from Abika, turned back goalwards. Millwall doing everything but putting it in the back of the net. Somehow Huddersfield survived, and that, by a distance, is the closest Millwall have come. How on earth did Abika miss that chance? I'd probably get another look at it, but brilliant build-up play. Harris is involved with a break into the penalty area. It's Jack Smith who uh, provides a brilliant cross, and Abika it just seems to... He acts a little bit late, and it's just not a solid header at all. Surely that can't be much longer before Huddersfield's victory is confirmed. This race for automatic promotion takes another mighty twist. Sheer delight at the Gal Farm. Huddersfield end Millwall's unbeaten run. Obviously a good game in front of the cameras, and crowd were unbelievable. Yeah, we played well all game, we thoroughly deserved the win. A good win for us against a very, very good side.
It put town in great heart for the trip to already relegated Stockport, where Terriers fans accounted for almost exactly half of the 6,887 crowd. Games against doomed sides can sometimes turn out to be tricky, as they suddenly play with freedom. Not this time. For the fourth occasion this season, Town scored six. Anthony Pilkington netted the first as early as the second minute with the aid of a deflection. The Terriers had to wait until the 37th minute for the second, Theo Robinson making the most of an inadvertent back pass to slot pass keeper Fon Williams. The third arrived in the 67th minute. Pilkington's cross was deflected onto a post by Robinson. Jordan Rhodes snapped up the rebound. It wasn't until the 85th minute that the floodgates really opened with Danny Drinkwater's superb free kick. In added time, Gary Roberts made it five with the goal of the day. And there was still time for Lee Novak to drill home a penalty after Drinkwater had been felled in the box. Stockport County nil, Town six. And it was a result that booked Town's playoff place beyond all doubt. Now Colchester, their opponents in the final home game of the regular season the following Saturday, had no chance of catching them. In fact, there was still a slim mathematical chance that they could somehow grab automatic promotion. An unlikely set of results was needed, but if Town won the remaining two games and the others went their way, it was still on. It was nice to have that guaranteed not going in against Colchester, knowing whoever won that game would go in the playoffs, so it was better. The game against Colchester was, was fabulous. That uh, was the day we gave out 16,000 T-shirts. And I don't think the stadium has, has, has looked any better than it did on that Saturday afternoon. Magnificent gesture. Great idea by himself and the chief executive to do that. I think they reduced the ticket prices as well. So, yeah, it was terrific. Because I think they'd seen that, how they'd helped the team against Millwall in the previous home game. And they, they thought that final kick over the line, get the fans right behind us. At first it all went according to plan as Town took a 17th minute lead. Colchester's Paul Reid inexplicably handled at the far post and Theo Robinson, with that characteristic pause halfway through his run-up, converted the penalty. But however disappointed Colchester were to miss out on the playoffs, they showed plenty of resolve and with 30 minutes of normal time remaining, grabbed a deserved equaliser through Simon Hackney. The game appeared to be drifting towards a draw when, yet again, on this occasion in the fourth minute of added time, Lee Novak came up with the winner. As happy fans invaded the pitch, manager Lee Clark and chairman Dean Hoyer deservedly took the plaudits. didn't play that well, but uh, as I said, we won the game right at the death. We didn't even have time to kick off, so it was a good win for us. Um, but it opened it all up for the last game of the season. Yes, incredibly, as they walked out for the final game of the regular season at Exeter, Town could still achieve automatic promotion. For that to happen, though, they first of all had to win by at least four clear goals. Not easy against the side fighting for their own lives at the wrong end of the table. Exeter needed a win to guarantee their League One survival. It was a massive game for both. Were. They needed to stay up and we were still trying to get automatic. Um, but they didn't start the best and we hit them on the break then. After that they had come out strong and we knew they would because they were fighting to stay in that league. 
It started so well as Town scored in their very first attack of the game. Gary Roberts latched on to a misplaced pass and turned the defence inside out before firing past Paul Jones. You know, Nico going up at exit after a few minutes. You're thinking if he can do it right and get another one just before half time, there could be an opportunity. But just felt that we just didn't approach the rest of the half in the right manner. And Exeter fighting for the lives, put us under a bit of pressure, and that told. And the equaliser duly arrived after 22 minutes. Matt Taylor heading powerfully home from the corner. And eight minutes from time, Exeter grabbed the winner that ensured their safety. And a fine goal it was too. Ryan Harley volleying home from outside the box. Final score, Exeter City 2, Town 1. We were disappointed, but I, I thought it might have been a situation where we were a little bit of a wake-up call for the players and going into a tough uh, playoff game. With effectively a new side uh, and a new manager who'd got a good 18 months under his belt, the club had come an awful long way. And, uh, and I think now you look back and it is, uh, it's a fantastic achievement and I think uh, uh, something that every fan and uh, every staff, everybody associated with Huddersfield Town Football Club can be extremely proud of. In the end, it didn't make any difference. On the final day, Leeds United beat Bristol Rovers to join champions Norwich in the championship. Millwall beat Swindon to ensure third. Charlton won at Oldham to leapfrog above Swindon into fourth. Town ended up in the sixth and final playoff spot they'd occupied for much of the season. It meant that the first leg of the semi-final tie against Millwall would be at the Galfar. To be fair, myself personally, I, I weren't really too bothered. We all know that Millwall are a strong team, but so are the other two teams. We just had to um, just take whichever team we got and um, just try and do our best, and that's all you can do. We've had teams come here and be physical before, and we've dealt with it, and and, and we've won. Um, so we we thought the home leg wouldn't. We knew if we played well as well as we could, we we, we should beat them. Chances in the premium so far, looking promising though for Millwall. Oh, and there's a big shout for handball there. Now, Barron's shot has been blocked there by the hand of Peter Clark, right in front of the referee. He's clearly got his hands up, he's protecting his face. Well, you've seen them given. I think that's what Kenny Jackett is saying to his coaching staff. And it's for his best move of the game so far. Here's Novak. Oh, it should have been 1 0. And the Millwall goalkeeper is furious with his defence. Lee Clark can't quite believe that this ball hasn't ended up in the back of the net. It's almost in the roof of the stand. Well, it's Town's best move so far. This is Barron. Oh, he's gone down. Oh, Clark involved again. Another penalty appeal for Millwall. And again, the referee says no. And Kenny Jacket is apoplectic. Well, if we'd seen those given that we saw in the first half, what about that one? The referee had a very good view of it. Barron has ridden one challenge. Oh, has he just collided with Clark? Maybe that's what the referee is thinking. He thinks it should have been a penalty. And a few more players in there, including Harris. Now, has that gone in off his hand? I think it has. And Harris is putting his hand up to apologise. But it's a yellow card for the Millwall striker. I'm not so sure he really needed to put his arm up like that. He may be a god to some of the Millwall supporters, but the hand of Harris will not count. Harris exerting plenty of pressure at the moment. Good clearance there by the goalkeeper. 
Still plenty forward for town. Put this for offside by Millwall. The flag is up. This isn't going to count. Lee Novak's put it into the roof of the net, but now it's Town's turn to be disappointed. Well, there was at least one, possibly two, maybe even three offside as the ball's played in. Yeah, you can see quite clearly there. The flag goes up now. I think we played the better football in the first game, but we just didn't put the ball in the back of the net. We've had a few chances and it didn't happen. I thought it was a very competitive game. In all honesty, you know, in my heart of hearts, I knew we really had to get a goal here to get some, for something to hang on to there. Millwall uh, did the job. They um, had a couple of players out from that game, and I think they replaced them with defensive players. If you look at the team and the way they set up that, that, that dinner time, they were, they were hoping for what they got. So it was still all to play for as Town entered the Lion's Den in south-east London, well known for producing possibly the most hostile atmosphere anywhere in English football. Down there, definitely the fans tried to intimidate us. I don't know if it did intimidate us. Obviously, it might have intimidated a few of the, a few of the younger lads who have never experienced anything like that before. I've got to admit, I've never experienced hostility like it ever. I've been to some daunting places in my time. You know, you're in for a big game, you're in for a tough game, and that's what, that's what we want. It was just deafening, the lads were shouting at each other and just couldn't hear each other. And um, it was just, the fans were unbelievable, as were. Our fans were unbelievable for travelling down there in the numbers like they did. Peltier with the throw. Here's the fullback once more, back to Pilkington. Chance to steady himself. Good looking cross! It wasn't the worst header either. It's from Trotman. It? Yeah, I mean, I like Pilkington on this right hand side. He comes in on his left foot and it's much more difficult to deal with. He whips it in. Back in from Craig. Referee says play on and Schofield just does that. And then the Morrison! Millwall's leading goal scorer scores the first goal of the tie and it's advantage Millwall down the right hand side in comes across and how do you like them Steve perfect isn't it even I could have put that away nice little tap in Novak once more to neat Huddersfield build up in from Pilkington and that had to be turned over by David Ford he had to watch that one all the way. Yeah, it's just, it takes a wicked deflection, doesn't it? And the goalkeeper, in fair, this might help his confidence. It's one of those where he's just got to commit to it. And that might just set him straight for the rest of the match. Obviously, we went in 1-0 down half-time, but it was still the same situation before the game. We still need the score. So we still believed that we could um, go and get the goal because we'd scored so many in the season we were known for attacking football. Pilkington, all the space for Peltier on the overlap, is the quality at the end of it, oh there was, it was such an inviting cross, it only needed a touch and Novak couldn't apply it. Yeah, I mean great play from Huddersfield, it's a wicked ball that he puts in and you really should be attacking that ball shouldn't he Novak. Scott Barron to deliver the Millwall corner to useful one as well would you believe it the skipper Paul Robinson to head home and to send Millwall back to Wembley surely now in the League One playoff final against Swindon well it's a great moment isn't it for the captain it's a towering header at the far post you just look it comes in bang I mean, he's gone over the top of Trotman there. He'll be disappointed. I mean, it's an outstanding header. And he really wanted it. That's what that was about. He wanted it more than anybody else. I think some of the commentators said it was too intimidating for players, but I don't think it was. I just think we never played. The fans, they're only fans. They're, they're, they're not going to run on and kill you. Well, maybe they was there, but... Certainly, we didn't have enough players playing to their full potential in the second game. 
and that not because of the one to try and I've got to repeat that. I think they've all given magnificent effort, but we just we just uh, weren't at our usual level in the second game. I think if we're honest, on the evening, not enough uh, players played as well as the they've shown through the course of the season. The vision for Huddersfield Town Football Club is, is to continually progress. Uh, it's one thing that we have set out in the new era, uh, and that's everything, both on and off the field. Now, with regards to on the field, Lee has got the challenge to, to improve on what he's done, uh, what he's, he's created here in this, this chapter one of the new era. We are in League One, we have to accept that. We've got to look forward to the challenge, and we've got to be prepared to, uh, you know, work hard and uh, try and uh, improve on what we've done this uh, this season just gone. We all wanted to be promoted, ultimately we weren't and you know something we've got to deal with but not particularly nice. Having said that, we've got to be in the, the mix again at the end of next season. If it's in the playoffs so be it but ultimately we'd like to you know come the middle of May, the, the bank holiday weekend in May when the playoff final is. We'd, like to be already promoted. Next season it'll, it'll be tough, but we, we'll be, personally, I'll be open to get automatic.